Hey everyone, Vega here from Serpent X Tech, and in this video I want to talk to you about the Intel DG GPUs that's believed to be coming out sometime in Q1 of 2022, but I'm expecting more like late Q1 or early Q2 2022. Now, the internet's uh, speculating on performance based on a leaked slide that we've, we've all bumped into recently, and I just want to go over a few things here and kind of lead to, uh, you know, what my theory or my thoughts on the situation are. But I'm interested to hear from you down below. So the DG1, because we should get two different types of cards, you know, like a mid-range or middle performance card, uh, mainstream or lower tier card. Uh, the DG1 is expected to be 175 to 225 watt TDP, which is going to be, you know, competing in the... 3070 to 3060 Ti arena on the NVIDIA side or the 6700 XT and the 6600 XT on the AMD side with the pricing uh, expected to be around you know $300, $300 to $500 but we know as I go through this pricing take it with a, a huge grain of salt considering current market conditions on the lower mainstream card expecting you know a 75 watt TDP uh, which is going to be putting it in the arena of the 1650 Super uh, uh, pricing around 100 to 150 bucks. Again, huge grain of salt. Now, looking at this slide, um, I didn't expect Intel to come out the gate, you know, running and and hitting that top tier market. Right? It's very hard for Intel, especially any new company, to come into the GPU market and compete at such a high level. You know, with Nvidia and AMD. Uh, AMD's been doing really good on the CPU side of things, and they've been catching up on the GPU side of things. But NVIDIA still technically holds the crown, um, and this could be a huge debate with the 3090 because the 6900 XT can beat the 3090 in certain certain workloads, certain categories. But staying on Intel, Team Blue, uh, we're looking at a card, even if it could hit 225 watt TDP, it's going to really be hit, you know nipping at the heels of the 3070 and the 6700 XT, not to mention there's a 3070 Ti, which is completely outside of where we're looking. So I would say it's gonna be an underperformer because Intel likes to boost up their performance numbers and they don't t give specifics about the workloads or testing methodology that they use. So I would say, you know, whatever they're saying, <laughs> you know, minus maybe about 10 to 20%, depending on the workload, and there's your actual number, but really wanna wait for actual reviews from tech tubers and the like. But it should be just below the 3070 and the 6700 XT, but comparatively uh, next to or above the 6600 XT and the 3060 Ti. Uh, and there's different variants of the 3060 Ti too, which we have gotta take into account. So we really just, it's, it's gonna be a huge grain of salt in this entire thing, but I would be very impressed on the mainstream side of things with Intel uh, providing a, a lower tiered card that can really be uh, taken in uh, by the mass community, right? Because a lot of people that have computers that they built that they don't even have a GPU, they might be using an APU and they'd want a GPU, but the prices are so expensive. Um, you know, even if their Intel mainstream card, you know, say is 150 bucks, considering scalper prices and current market conditions, you know, maybe it's only like 250, 300 for the card, which I still wouldn't spend on a 75 watt TDP. I'm just saying, you know, taking into consideration. Uh, that card I can see, you know, being more available to the masses if they can get the supply right at launch and people being able to populate their GPU slots in their computers that they built or OEMs taking advantage of it and selling it on their uh, various computer packages and stuff like that. So I'm really impressed because AMD and Nvidia really has just not really focused on that segment, right? The lower tier segment has been kind of left high and dry. Yeah, we still have the 1650 Super, but how old is that card? I haven't seen one from AMD and I haven't seen another from Nvidia, at least a new generation. So Intel really focusing on that might be the key indicator to start grabbing some of that market share. And many people have been commenting about uh, this slide on, on the internet. I would just be careful. Pricing I know for a fact is gonna be higher considering the, 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 the high demand, low supply situation that we're in. It's just happening throughout all markets, not just technology in general or computer tech in general. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna wind up spending a little bit more than what they're predicting here. Now, uh, a person that I talked about many times on this channel is uh, Moore's Law is Dead. Uh, they also do a Broken Silicon podcast. I'm gonna leave a link to this in my description where they talk about the uh, Intel 128 EU GPU. Sounds impressive, 512 uh, 
competes with the 3070. It's about a 10 minute long segment. I'm gonna share it with that specific timestamp down in the description below if you wanna to listen to that, pretty good stuff. Uh, really, I'm surprised that he only has 118K subscribers because I don't know. For me, because I'm a tech guy and I really like to get into the nitty gritty uh, specs, uh, it may not be as attractive to some other people that are a little bit more entertaining. Um, I find him entertaining, but everybody has their own preferences, so to speak. Uh, this article is just talking more about the pricing. The only reason why I'm bringing it up is Roger Cadori and the AMD team that Intel has taken over or has uh, not poached, right? You know, Roger Cadori went over on his own accord. Um, I didn't expect them to come out the gates running, and I don't expect uh, the pricing to be where it's at. So we want to give it time. We definitely want to, uh, you know, for example, when AMD first came out, a lot of the GPUs, uh, now talking to my crypto fam, a lot of the GPUs weren't able to utilize the mining programs or the compute workloads uh, because they weren't coded for that architecture and stuff like that. This is going to be new to the GPU segment. So we can expect, one, that they're not going to work off rip. Two, we're going to have to wait for improved drivers or driver improvements over time. And three, um, if they don't work, just hang tight for your specific workload because a lot of the, the gaming developers may already have these GPUs and are optimizing their game titles for utilizing whatever Intel architecture and stuff like that they have going on. Uh, but the other various compute workloads and, and projects don't have that luxury. They're going to have to wait for launch. And even during launch, it might be hard to get their hands on the GPU. So it's going to take time for them to update kernels, uh, OpenCL driver, whatever it may be for your workload to actually work. Um, I can really see the gamers taking a liking to this because that's going to be a whole new uh, segment in which they can utilize and actually, again, fill their computers that they built with GPUs. So just give it some time. Um, no, no hard feelings against the gamers or the miners. Uh, we're, we're both competing against the scalpers, uh, but pricing is going to be higher than what is expected to be the MSRP, unfortunately. I don't see anything getting better until end of Q2 or Q, no, not even that, Q4 2022 or even 2023. Uh, so it's just going to be a patience game. Uh, but Intel bringing GPUs into the market or entering the GP market as a whole is going to alleviate some of that anxiety or stress that the market is experiencing right now with NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. New Intel is on the rise. Will it compete? We'll have to see. I would say wait for tech reviewers to, to give you a proper review once they actually have the hardware in their hands. Uh, you know, take everything right now with a grain of salt, especially pricing. And whatever Intel says the performance numbers are, minus about 10 to 20, 20%, and that might be the actual, because they like to fluff things up a little bit. But it's going to be very nice to see Intel be smart and focus on that lower end mainstream GPUs to really start to improve their market share and get GPUs into the hands of people who really need it. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Please feel free to do so. Uh, on the way out, do me a favor, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell if you like content like this, as well as check out some of the links that help support the channel down in the description. You all have a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.